In this Sketcher deep dive video, we're going to take a look at creating geometry, specifically lines, rectangles, circles, and arcs. We'll also talk about construction mode. First off, to create a line, you can click on the line icon. You also notice in Creo Parametric 4.0, it is the keyboard shortcut of the letter L. Also, if you hold down the right mouse button from the sketch tools, you can get to the line chain. And so you're going to click with the left mouse button to start the line. You'll notice the rubber band effect. Also, it'll snap to various constraints like horizontal and vertical. I really don't have anything else I can snap to at this point. But click left to end your first line. And by default, your last endpoint is the start point of your new line. And so again, I'll move out to where I want to be. Here we see where it's snapping to perpendicular, but I'll just sketch over here and then I can drag it back and it'll snap back to the starting point. So again, left mouse clicks. If I middle mouse click, it no longer has my last endpoint being my new start point. I could go over here and then sketch another line and again, continue the process of sketching my entities. And if I hit the middle mouse button again, I'm able to start my new line at a new location, hit the middle mouse button one more time, and it takes you out of line creation mode. You'll notice that we have a whole bunch of weak dimensions on the computer screen. To reduce clutter, I'm going to go to the In Graphics toolbar and turn off the dimension display. Also, because of the options I have over here for shading closed loops, it's filling the interior of those lines. If I don't want to see closed loops shaded, you can click on the button. <clears throat> and there you see just the lines. All right, before I create the other kind of line, a line tangent, I'm going to create a couple of circles. Here we go. So here's the circle using the center and point method. Also, again, if you hold down the right mouse button from the pop-up menu, you can get to circle. Again, you'll locate the center, drag it out, and then left click. And I'm still in circle creation mode. You'll notice that allows me to snap again to different entities. I'll go over here, and they're snapping to equal radius, but I'm going to make them different radii. So now that I have these two circles in here, I'm going to show you the other method of creating a line, which is a line that is tangent to two entities. So I'll click the icon, and then you pick the first entity that you're going to be tangent to, and then the second entity. And I'll go over here. You can just see that you uh, can get different kinds of two tangent lines. Oops, got out along a tangent mode. Click left, click left. So there are four different kinds of two tangent lines. Okay, now let's take a look at rectangles. And there are four different kinds of rectangles that we can create. The default is the corner rectangle, which is the keyboard shortcut of the letter R. Click on that, locate one corner, and then locate the other corner. Besides doing a corner rectangle, you could do a rectangle that is slanted, or in other words, at an angle. And so we'll click left and then put at whatever angle that we want and then drag out the rectangle to whatever width that we want. You can also do a center rectangle. So we're locating the center of the rectangle and then dragging out. And you'll notice that when you do this, you also get a couple of center lines in here. At this point, my screen is getting cluttered with my various constraints. So again, I can go to the In Graphics toolbar and turn off the constraints display. And the last kind of rectangle is actually a parallelogram. So start the parallelogram, do the first side, and then you can see as I'm rotating through here the various different kinds of parallelograms I can get. All right, we already did one kind of circle, which is the center end point. You can also do a concentric circle. So pick one circle, and then we're just dragging out or drag to the inside, 
to create the circle that is concentric to the other circle. And it can also be done concentric to an arc. From the circle drop down menu, we can also do a three point circle. Let me go back up over here. So for the three point, pick one entity, a second entity, and a third entity. And that way we have our circle going through those three different points. Besides doing the three point circle, you can do the three tangent circle. So pick three entities. And it'll be tangent to those three different entities. All right, next up, let's take a look at creating arcs. And so the first kind of arc is the three point or the tangent end arc. And so I'm going to start with my first left mouse click and then drag out over here. You can see that I'm snapping over two different entities. Also, when I'm creating my arc, let's start it at this endpoint over here. You'll notice what I'm getting over here before I start creating my arc. Let me use the F12 just to show you that we have something that's called, I believe they call this the target for the arc. And basically, when you snap it to geometry, you're going to get this circle with like a couple of crosshairs in the middle. And basically, when you drag your mouse out of the target, depending on which, uh, which quadrant that you drag out of, you're either going to end up with tangency or not. And there's a rule that you can remember. I, I, I don't recommend memorizing the rule. Basically, I just tell people, hey, when you drag it out, if you're not getting it tangent, no problem. Uh, if that's what you want, that's good. But also, as you're dragging out, you should be able to snap to tangency to different entities. And let me turn off my magnifier. Uh, you can also get it to snap to tangency as you are creating the arc. So again, when I click on geometry, we get that little target over there. And again, you can drag out the arc however which way that you want to create it. Next kind of arc, center and the end. So again, start the center and then we drag out the two endpoints of the arc. You can also do a three tangent arc. So we can do one, two, and then three, just like our three tangent circle. And also like a circle, you can do a concentric arc. So I can pick, say, this circle and start and end of the arc. And when you are making a concentric entity, it can be concentric either to a circle or an arc. All right, the very last kind of entity that we're going to create in this video is a conic. And the definition of a conic is, imagine taking a cone and then slicing a plane through the cone. Depending on the orientation of that plane relative to the cone, you're going to end up either with a circle or a parabola or a hyperbola or something that is elliptical in shape. And so when you go to create the conic, locate one point and then the other end of the conic and then you can drag out the shape to whatever you want and for this one I am going to turn on my dimension display very quickly so here we have this parameter over here right now it's a value of 0.5 this 0.5 value determines the shape of your conic if it's a value of 0.5 you're going to get a parabola Greater than 0.5 is a hyperbola, uh, and if it's an exact value square root of 2 minus 1, it's going to end up being a circle. Let's talk about construction mode. All right, let's turn off our dimension display again. So right now, all these entities that I've created are going to be solid geometry. So when I hit the check mark, these are all going to be curves inside of my sketch feature. Sometimes when you are sketching, you're creating geometry just as a reference for making more solid geometry. So to do that, you can turn on construction mode. And that way, when I go to create a circle, it's going to appear dashed. And then I can get out of construction mode. And I can use this circle for creating whatever other additional geometry that I want. So for example, I'm creating, oops, let's make a regular line. Uh, I can snap into my 
construction geometry for making it. Also, if you create geometry that is uh, created as a regular solid, you can select the different entities and then from your mini toolbar, you can choose to make this as construction. Also, the keyboard shortcut for that is Shift G. So now that line appears as dashed. Similarly, you can select construction geometry and from the mini toolbar, we have an icon that allows you to turn it to solid geometry. Again, Shift G will allow you to toggle back and forth between construction and solid geometry. So again, your solid geometry will end up being part of the sketch when you go back to part mode, but your construction geometry exists only within the sketch. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.